Hey class, here are just a few um, overarching thoughts for you to consider as you study fundamentalism this week. Um, the course notes give you a good um, lay of the land, so I'm just going to kind of give you um, a little bit of an interpretive framework for you to look at. <clears throat> as we looked at last week, we saw the fundament or the liberalism and social gospel side, and now we're going to look at the other side of that coin, the fundamentalist reaction. Um, most likely, you guys all know at least a decent amount about this part of the Christian church history, um, so I'll just kind of assume some basic knowledge, but some thoughts to consider as we study this material is the rules are changing in regards to what is seen as um, a argument or a logical thought. Um, and what I mean by this is during the turn of the century, 1900, 1920, 1930, whatever, the way the discourse is about the Bible and about Christianity is shifting. Fundamentalists will make their arguments specifically drawn from the Bible. A lot of their literature will say, the Bible says this in this chapter, in this verse, therefore it's true. Um, liberals um, and more free thinkers operate on a difference idea. They offer, operate on what they can see empirically, what can be justified through scientific method and through um, trial and error. What can I see, touch, taste, and feel? What do I know is true? So the two groups are operating on two completely different sets of what is considered real. Um, and the other and the two sides don't have any commonality to connect with, if that makes sense. The fundamentalists, as I said, use the Bible as their main source of um, authority. And liberals and free thinkers use um, empiricism and scientific methodologies. So there's very little overlap. What up, ends up happening is because the fundamentalists are so focused upon the Bible, they end up alienating everybody and they fragment and fragment and fragment and fragment and they become a very ghettoized, alienated part of society and not very many people take them seriously starting around, you know, the turn of a century and increasing it all the way until 1930, 1940. Um, that'll turn around when we get to neo-evangelicalism, but we'll talk about that later. Um, just an example of this increasing fragmentation of, of uh, the fundamentalist viewpoint is the monkey trials with William Jennings Bryant. And, I mean, you can study in more detail what happened during this trial, but Essentially, the fundamentalist side kind of just uh, got, that's a complicated story, but they, had, they ended up getting discredited. Um, not through any specific faux pas or danger that Bryant did, but um, the media kind of treated it as um, a way to point poke fun at the fundamentalist views. So this continues to make them feel more ghettoized and more hostile towards the outside culture. So just wanted to keep that, just wanted you to keep that in mind as you study um, fundamentalism. There is an increasing fragmentation between them and larger society because they operate on a different set of beliefs and principles and argumentation that um, everyone else doesn't really use. So keep that in mind, and um, yeah, have a good week. Thanks.